Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of an update of what we did. We went away over the long week and with my family. There was like about 10 to 15 of us. Had so much fun, but we had no reception at all. Honestly, I didn't think that we would have no reception or anything, but that's what happened. It was really good to just get away without having to check my phone. I didn't look on Instagram, social media, nothing for like two and a half days straight, which was great. And we just had a lot of fun, quality family time. But today's video, as you probably saw from the title, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of embroidering, but we're gonna make something together. So I have this blank sweater right here. It's a little bit of an oversized sweater and I really like the color of it, but it's just a bit plain. And I thought, why not show you the process of making a logo and embroidering it. And I've seen a bunch of like Nike vintage sweaters going around and people trying to buy it and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know what? Since you can't buy it, or I haven't really checked that much to be honest, I'm gonna just try and embroider one. And all the people that are being like copyright and all this stuff, please don't come for me. I'm just doing this for fun. I'm not selling it or anything. Just wanna make it and see how it turns out. So let's head to the computer. I've done like a little bit of a mock up. I'll show you roughly how to digitize it and let's make this sweater. This right here is the logo. What I actually did was I made this on Photoshop. So I got the Nike tick off Google and with the text, I just wrote the words Nike, found a font that kind of looks like this old school English text that's kind of vintage. And then I layered it, did a bit of a stroke. This would be probably another video if you guys want me to show you how we roughly make quick logos. But all I'm gonna do is I'm going to open my embroidery file thing so i use wilcom by hatch it's quite expensive but it's honestly so easy to use and here is my logo so all i'm going to do is i'm going to just drag it in and hope that it works and there we go i just got to make it 100 percent and the logo's in so now let's get to digitizing so a really good thing about this wilcom by hatch program is that it actually auto digitizes things for you if you want which makes the process a lot harder, I mean a lot easier, not a lot harder, because digitizing things, I think it takes a lot of effort and time, and a lot of people do really enjoy it, but with me, I just need to get it done, so auto digitizing is perfect. I'm gonna move the camera this way and hope that it just kind of stays, and I'll talk through what I'm doing. All right, I'm hoping this is a good enough angle, but as you guys can see, the logo is imported right there. There's two things I like to do. The first one on the left-hand side, it's auto digitize instant embroidery. Now this will instantly obviously just do it for you. Sometimes I like to check just to see if it will work. And let me zoom in. It pretty much did it straight up. So if you guys can see right there, that is roughly what the threading will look like. So sometimes this will work, sometimes it won't work. If you have like a really complex design, usually it doesn't, but because this is just an outline, it's gonna work usually. And now what I do is I click the back end. This, what will do, what it will do, sorry, it will delete the background and that will be our embroidery. So what I need to do is I'm just going to highlight everything and I'm going to make it the size I want it to be. So I want it to be about 18 to 20 centimeters in width. So I'm gonna do 180, which is 18 centimeters. Eight, um, and then one last thing I like to go over here, which says stitching and hopefully it's gonna have what I want, but what I like is to have a center run. And a center run is like honestly the easiest thing for embroidery for me on our machine. And I'm going to make this a center run. It makes it a little bit faster as well. So instead it will do like a center and then it'll do like zigzaggies around all of the uh, icons. Why is that one to teeny? I always just like to double click just to make sure that everything is the same. And honestly, that looks pretty amazing and pretty good so far. Let me just zoom in for you guys a little bit more so you can see. And another really cool thing about this, as you guys can see, everything is all digitized. It roughly looks like the thread. What I like to do is you can press the top here, which says player, and it will roughly show you guys what the embroidery and the detail and layering it's gonna be. So if you watch this right now, that is what the machine is going to do. So it's gonna start with the tick first, do the outline as you guys can see. I'm pretty sure I can make it go a little bit faster, but we'll just slowly go through. It's gonna do another line. Oh, what is it doing? 
and then I'm pretty sure now it's going to start doing a zigzag and on this side over here it shows you the order of what it's going to be so what I like to do is I like to start with the end first so I'm going to move the end up to the top and spell out Nike and do the tick last whereas with this uh, auto digitizing it just did it in the opposite way so I'm going to fix this all up so that when it embroiders it's in order and we know when it's about to finish so now I'm going to go file export design and I'm going to just write Nike vintage save it onto my USB which I have over here and now let's go to the embroidery machine now I'm going to go file and I'm going to find the Nike design which should always be at the very end right there you guys can see Nike VI and I'm going to press this one which will save it to the machine and also you can see that the Nike logo is right there and so once it's saved to the machine, I go to the machine, scroll all the way to the end, and then I'm going to put that there. Okay. And she's done and ready to be embroidered. Okay, let's hoop everything up. Today we will be using this hoop size, which is 20 centimeters by 15 centimeters. So I've got the logo, as I said, to be 18 centimeters in width and height in proportion. I could do it bigger, but the bigger the logo, obviously the longer time it will be. And because I am quite small, I think this size of a logo on my jumper will be fine. So I always use this little like measuring t-shirt jumper holder you put it in like a coat hanger it just is the shape of that comes down it shows you where the center is shows you where to kind of place everything but what i also like to do is have another ruler going across so i can mark with my water soluble pen this is not the one actually this is totally just a normal texture but i mark here here and then i will mark the center so let's do that the reason why I like to do these marks on either side is so when I'm hooping it, I know that my hoop is straight and not going to on an angle because we would hate if the logo was lopsided. Now I'm going to grab my pin and I'm going to mark the center of the jumper so that I know. And I'm also going to mark where I want the logo to be. So usually I like to have things about 10 centimeters to 15 centimeters down. So I'm going to do for this one, I reckon 12 would be quite nice. So as you see there, I've got my center point where I know to put the logo when it gets in the machine. Now I grab my magnetic hoop. This is very, very strong to be honest, quite scary as well. Put this underneath, take this t-shirt thing. It's honestly so good. I got this I think for $35. You can get some a little bit cheaper from eBay and stuff, but I was just supporting this local business. And now we just hoop this. I try and make the bottom underneath hoop, which is in here right now, as straight as possible so that when I put this top one on, it kind of just goes. And that was in one go. All hooped up and as you guys can see, this here is the blue marks that I did. So the reason I have that is so I know whether or not it's straight because on the edges, there's all these little marks with numbers so that you can see. Let's put it into the machine. I've got my backing right here. So all I've got to do is put this underneath in between the machine and the jumper. I'm definitely going to need two hands for this, but I will try with one. If you guys can see right there, I've got the stabilizer, medium stabilizer underneath in between the arm sleeve right here of the embroidery machine and then it's just there just kind of floating i always like to turn on the light so that i can see it a little bit easier and now all we got to do is trace this did you see where i put that pin point before that is the center point there so we've got to match match up the first needle to that point right there So it is pretty close, but still a little bit far down. So now I've got to just continuously move the machine up a little bit and find the center point. I'm just going to move it to the left a little bit more. 
and that is pretty good. Now I'm going to trace it one more time just to make sure that the needle will not hit this edge bit because if it hits this edge bit, the machine is game over. Okay, I'm definitely cutting this very, very close. I should probably make the logo a tiny bit smaller, but I want it to be decently big-ish. So I'm just going to keep it as is and press play on the machine. Also, since this is a cream jumper, I'm going to go for like that lightish color. So I'm going to just choose a white thread. I don't want to do black because I don't want it to be too harsh. I want it to be a little bit more subtle. And here we go. She is off and ready. I will see you guys. The time right now is 1.36, so we'll time it and I'll show you guys how long it takes until the Nike logo is finished. update the time right now is 1:52, so that took about 15 or so minutes to do this is done let's take it out and see how it looks honestly i feel like it looks pretty cool i'm actually quite excited for this wow look at that okay let's take the hoop out and see what it properly looks like I've got the backing right here, which I need to take off. Hoop is now off and I also got a little bit of water and a paintbrush so I can remove the blue texture line that I did. What I'm gonna do now, one last final step, is use this heat press machine and press it so that it looks nice and smooth. We'll give it a try on, but honestly, I'm so happy that this worked just the first go. I didn't even have to do a like, tester or anything straight onto the jumper dun, 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 dun. this is the jumper i don't know if you guys can fully see because it is white and it's quite bright behind me but honestly i am so happy it really does look like a legit nike jumper although it's just a replica i'm gonna try it on right now and see what it looks like I think if I did it in black, it would be very in your face and less subtle. I really like the white, although it probably would have been easier for you guys to see. But yes, this is what the jumper looks like. Take maybe a few B-roll shots. I think I'm going to end the video here. This is us making a jumper together from the very start to the very end. This is the final product of what it looks like. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't know, I really, really like this. I'm so, so happy with how well it turned out. It took about 15 to 20 minutes to make. Overall, probably about 20 to 25. So maybe even 30 because we did have to digitize it, put it into the machine, hoop it, measure everything. But yes, that's a little insight. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful. If you want to see more of us making other types of like different logos and stuff, let me know. Or just other sewing things, embroidery things and all that. As always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And I will see you guys in our next video. Bye, guys.